How do you bring your database changes in line with other development efforts? Keep them under version control and enable automatic, safe deployments. In other words, how do you include them in your CI-CD process? We'll have a look at what's the problem with database schema changes, why they differ from application changes, and two tools that help us in solving issues with database migration, Flyway and Liquibase. What's so different from deploying new versions of your application code versus deploying new database schema changes? Typically, your application code goes through phases. New code, new version is source code repository, new deployable artifact, new deployment that replaces your whole application lifecycle. For database schema design, if you in example introduce new columns, you can't just redeploy new schema. You probably already have data in your production system. Existing data means state. And as we already saw in most recent AI example, data is king. Under no circumstances can you afford to lose it. So, drop create approach is definitely not valid. Instead, you have to take approach that respects existing data and incrementally adds schema changes. So-called database migration approach. How does database migration approach look? In an example of a new column, instead of drop create table scripts, you'd have alter table add column script that will make sure you'd keep integrity of existing data. But you'd also need a way to track what migrations you've already run, not to accidentally run scripts multiple times. In essence, you need migration templates that tell you how to get to the next version and a way to track what was already executed on environment you are trying to upgrade. That's the approach database migration tools Liquibase and Flyway take to help you with migration. As for migration templates, in Liquibase you have explicit file that serves as a ledger of changes called changelog, and unit of changes it contains are called change sets. Flyway takes more implicit approach, where you use file name in schemes to tell the tool that this script should be run as a unit of change. To mark whether a certain change has been run and provide deployment information, both tools create tables the first time you run migration in certain database and store change name along with checksum of change content. By default, Liquibase creates database change log table and Flyway Flyway schema history table. What's nice is that migration templates are just plain text files and can be stored in your source control alongside your application code. They can be integrated in your CI-CD pipeline, bringing in line your database changes with the rest of the automatic DevOps deployment process. Both Liquibase and Flyway provide pretty much every standard way to integrate into your CI-CD pipeline. Docker, Maven, command line interface, and Spring Boot has starter for both tools, allowing you to run migrations on your application startup. In enterprise, where your changes traditionally travel through multiple environments like dev, quality assurance, user acceptance testing, prod, Liquibase and Flyway are smart enough to run only necessary changes. For example, dev environment would probably be the closest to the latest changes, so only one script will run while other environments might have multiple schema changes ran on them. These tools were primarily designed for relational databases that have schema, like Oracle, Postgres, MySQL, where they shine, but have also added support for other types of databases. Liquibase and Flyway were primarily designed for schema migrations. Although they technically support data migration, Migration scripts are just text files, they, they are public and kept in your source code repository, so they should not contain any sensitive information. If you do migrate data, you should restrict yourself just to reference codes your app might need to work, like country and currency codes. Let's look at an example of schema migration by using Liquibase and Flyway command line tools. I've prepared a project where we'll start up two local Postgres instances, one for Flyway, one for Liquibase, and migrate the same schema to get a sense of how these tools work. In the project, we have Docker Compose file that will start up our instances and directories for Flyway and for Liquibase, which contain appropriate files for each of the tools. Let's start up our instances using Docker Compose, and then we'll have a look at what each file in the directory contains.
And just to confirm, we have two instances started. Our Docker Compose file contains two services, both based on image for Postgres 15 database. One for Liquibase and one for Flyway. And we have them running on different ports, so we can have them up at the same time and avoid port conflicts. In order for us not to have to type in username, password and database URL each time we use the CLI, we define those properties in configuration files. By default, Liquibase uses Liquibase properties file and Flyway uses flyway.conf file. Normally, you wouldn't keep your database passwords in a configuration file, but would use environment variables or some other mean to provide them at runtime. We'll use dbeaver, free database tool to connect to our instances, and we'll notice that currently they are empty, there are no tables or any database objects in them. For our demonstration, we'll try to migrate three tables and a view. We'll have accounts table, roles table and account roles table which is in the intersection between the two. And we'll also have account roles view which connects three tables together. After our initial migration we'll add additional column to accounts table and account roles view to demonstrate how to deal with schema change. We'll start with Flyway. Flyway uses file naming convention to determine which SQL files it should run during migration. SQL files that are stored under SQL subdirectory and begin with uppercase B followed by the version number, double underscore and a custom name are ran automatically. Number behind the uppercase V determines the order. So a file named V1.01 is run before a file named V1.02. Unlike tables that cannot be created multiple times, database source files like views, functions, procedures, triggers, etc. are treated differently as they can be recreated multiple times each time they have a change. We have to let Flyway know that we are dealing with objects that can be recreated when changed. We do so by beginning our file names with uppercase R instead of uppercase V. Since these files can be run multiple times, we don't need to provide a version. Let's run our migration. I'll use Flyway command line tool, which you can download from Flyway website. You start Flyway migration by using Flyway migrate command. And our migration was successful. We'll notice Flyway has created our three tables and our repeatable view migration. But also, since this is the first time we ran migration in this database instance, Flyway Schema History Table. This is the table Flyway uses to track which migrations have already been run in this database instance. If we refresh our Postgres instance where we run our migrations, we'll see our four tables and a view popping up. If we have a look at Flyway Schema History Table data, we'll notice it contains metadata columns about the script being run, date when it was run, and the version number. It also contains checksum column. Checksum contains hash of script content and we let Flyway know if someone tampered with the file after the migration has been run. To demonstrate this, let's go back to our accounts SQL and change username column to username one. Save and try to run the migration again. Let's see what do we get this time when we run Flyway migrate again. And we get an error, checksum mismatch. Let's get back to our script and return the old name. For our next step, we'd like to add first name column to our accounts table. We already saw we can't modify this script. Instead, we'll have to create a new one that will alter the table. Let's create our new script. We'll need to call it uppercase V1.04, double underscores, and then we can provide any name we'd like. Let's say accounts add first name. SQL. Best is to provide some semantic name that has a meaning of what the script does. And then there we can add our alter table statement. We also want to add the first name column to our view, but since the view is a repeatable migration, we don't need to add a new script. We can modify the existing one. If we go back to our database instance and have a look at the accounts table, We'll notice that there is no first name column, similar for our account roles view. So let's go and carry out the change. 
we can run our migration by using flyweight migrate again. And we see that two migrations have been run, one for adding a column and the other one for repeatable migration for our view. If we go back to our database and refresh, we'll see the first name column popping out in our view and similar for our accounts table. Nice. Let's run the same migration with Liquibase. Liquibase is usually used in a way where naming doesn't matter. So I've created a subdirectory called schema and placed our scripts in there. Notice there is no special prefix. The script name is accounts.sql. Liquibase considers these scripts as change sets and the way you tell Liquibase which change sets it needs to run is by including them in change log file. We've included our scripts in a change log file by providing an explicit path to them. Notice we only have three scripts. That's because for one change I wanted to showcase alternative Liquibase provides. Instead of SQL, we can use Liquibase special syntax for creating database objects. Advantage is that Liquibase uses database agnostic properties for, in example, column types, and we'll try to run appropriate SQL depending on which database we are trying to deploy on. Disadvantage is that you can only run these changes with Liquibase, as it's not something database native tools can understand. To tell Liquibase that certain changes are repeatable, like those on views, packages, functions, we use run on change attribute. In order to keep our Liquibase CLI commands short, we specified which change log file should Liquibase use in Liquibase properties file. If we go back to our database instances, we'll notice that the instance for Liquibase has no tables and has no views. In order to run migration with Liquibase, I'll use Liquibase CLI tool, which you can download from Liquibase site. And we can use the update command to run our migrations. And we see the update was successful. If we go back to our Liquibase instance and refresh, we'll notice that our objects are created. We'll also notice two tables we didn't specify are created. Database change log table is the table Liquibase uses to track which changes have been run on the instance. And database change log log table is helper table to prevent multiple simultaneous schema updates from different sources. Database change log table has metadata columns for change set Liquibase has run like data executed, order executed, MD5 sum, that's checksum for script content, which is the way Liquibase knows has someone tampered with the script after it has been run. Notice that for the ID column, we don't have to use numbers. Instead, I'd recommend you use semantic names that tell you what the script purpose is. If we go back to our change log, this is the ID I'm talking about. If we open one of our scripts and try to change the column name, let's say from username to username1, and try to run migration again, we expect error because the checksum has changed. Let's try it out and try to run Liquibase update again. And we see that change set checksum has failed and our update wasn't successful. Let's return our old column name. And let's create a new migration to add first name column to our accounts table. We'll paste alter table statement in there. We'll also add first name to our account roles view. Account roles view script is already included in our changelog file we need to add accounts at first name script. And we can add it underneath the create table accounts to keep our accounts changes grouped closely together. We'll rename our ID to alter table accounts at first name column and we'll change the path to accounts at first name SQL. Let's go back to our instance and confirm that currently account roles view doesn't have first name column, neither does accounts table. 
Let's run liquidbase update command to run our two migrations. And they were successful. Column was added and the view was changed. If we go back to our instance and refresh, we see the first name column in our table and the first name column in our view. If we go to database change log table and refresh, we see that the view script was rerun and the add column was ran. It was sixth script that was executed. Nice. That concludes our liquid based migration showcase. What if you made mistakes in your schema changes and need to roll back? Both tools offer rollback strategies and allow you to specify rollback statement for your schema change and sometimes provide it automatically. For example, drop column is a rollback for create column. But again, data is king and you have to consider what kind of rollback strategies you'll use. In the time you created the column and you realize it was a mistake, you might already be having data inside. So instead of rollback, it might be better to employ so-called fixing forward strategy, where you don't just drop the column, but before create a new column on some other appropriate table and move data there before dropping. It's important to note that I've only scratched the surface on what these tools can do. Snapshotting of schema, schema comparison, automatic generation of history for deploy changes, etc. If you haven't used them already, I hope I've convinced you to try them out on your projects.